Today we talk about the theory of flow and one's educational philosophy. Teacher Learning Cast. Uh, this day, September 8th, uh, 2018. This is episode number 21. My name is Benjamin Stewart, calling from beautiful Aguascalientes, Mexico. And this is Piri Herrera. Again, this morning, fresh morning here in Aguascalientes. Last night we had a heavy rain for a while, but it's a nice day, a little bit of fog. Uh, the Cerro del Muerto disappeared for a while, but here we are ready to go. Hello, everybody in all media, YouTube, Facebook and everywhere you're watching us live or on demand. We are here to talk about education, teaching, learning, and to practice English if you just want to do so. We got a lot of stuff going on here at the where we work. Uh, Piri and I teach at the Universidad Autonoma de Aguascalientes. We're in a teacher training program and we've got a conference coming up on Monday and Tuesday of this week. And so we're all getting geared up for that. And uh, I know, Pity, you're uh, planning on giving a talk. I'm planning on giving a couple of talks as well. And we hope to see some uh, locals here that are uh, here in the area. Uh, hopefully, they can come by and uh, attend the, the conference. Yes, we invite you all to join us. Uh, it's going to be a two days round in which uh, we're going to have some people from the outside, some uh, students of ourselves, some uh, uh, graduate students uh, doing some talks. And uh, we're going to see how this goes. This time, um, I'll be talking about uh, reflection for lifelong learning. And uh, and it, it will cover a little bit something that I want to share with you today as a tryout <laughs> for my talk. And I know, Ben, you're giving a couple of talks. What are they going to be about? Yeah, I'm going to give one talk on uh, performance tasks, which I think those who have... Uh... Uh, visit us and watch some of our prior recordings might be familiar with. Uh, so I'll be talking a little bit about performance task and assessment and uh, I'll give another talk on uh, life uh, long learners and uh, really what uh, not only students in our BA but also in-service teachers can do to be better lifelong learners. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to uh, attending some of the talks from our our graduate students students who graduated from the ba a lot of them are coming back and giving talks from uh, research that they've done so i'm really looking forward to uh, seeing some of those um, uh, students or some of our graduate students and seeing what they have to say so really we want to extend the invitation hopefully if uh, you're available here locally around uh, aguascalientes to come by and and attend the the conference really looking forward to it and uh, really having uh, the opportunities to watch and learn from some uh, of our uh, past students. Right. Uh, this is um, all part of our academic life, but at the same time, it's part of our true life. And that's why we decided to come together every Saturday morning, 8.15. We gather uh, to do these talks, to share our ideas, our experiences on teaching. Uh, Dr. Benjamin Stewart with a, a long trajectory here at the university and teaching and coming from the States and his studies and his PhD and myself also um, with uh, different experiences at different educational levels and uh, also working with teachers now for a while and uh, different experiences that we live um, in first hand, hand to hand, like with the students themselves in front of the group, like uh, facing the situations, but also a lot of situations we live through our students who are pre-service teachers and uh, and we have uh, different experiences from them. Um, and that's why we decide to gather together and start talking, sharing our ideas and giving our opinions on different issues and looking for somebody out there to also share with us whatever they got to say because we found out that Talking is the way to grow. Yes, and so we want to extend everyone. I think the easiest way to be part of the conversation, if you want to be a part of the live broadcast, we're always looking for uh, some guests to come in and, and share some of your experiences. We've had some great guests in the past. Um, but I think the easiest way to get 
or be part of the conversation is to join our Facebook page. So if you search Teacher Learning Cast in Facebook, we have a dedicated page specifically for sharing uh, the broadcasts. So our weekly broadcasts that we do are all being recorded. So uh, we are trying to find the best way to uh, keep an, a repository of our past recordings so that you can have access to them. And again, I think the best way to do that is to uh, visit our Facebook page. This week, we've also included the link to this live broadcast. So if you're watching us now live and you just want to pop in and say a few words or uh, talk about something or just want to attend uh, the live broadcast and be part of the recording, uh, you're encouraged to do that. Uh, we're starting to include the link again in uh, Facebook. So uh, today, this morning, I uploaded the link. And if you are interested and want to come, come by, you don't even have to attend the whole the whole hour, um, but if you just want to come in and say hello and uh, say a few words, that would be great as well. So uh, we want to encourage everyone to check out the link if you want to, and uh, if all, as always, feel free to leave comments either during the broadcast. I know, Petey, you're trying to field questions in Facebook. I'm also fielding questions in our YouTube broadcast page, which is another way that you can uh, participate, leaving comments. So between YouTube and Facebook uh, and fielding questions here, we'll, I think we'll, we've, got it, uh, we've got it covered, Petey. Yes, uh, Facebook is the secondary transmission. The people that is uh, joining us there uh, uh, today, um, you can click the link above, and you're gonna go directly to a place when you where you can see uh, the original transmission in which you have Benjamin in first plane. The way I'm looking at him right now in my screen, you can see that in Facebook. But you see him directly in first plane, and the voice is way better in that in in that uh, shot because uh, we have the direct sound, not the sound from my speakers. And also myself, you can have me in the first plane from my camera. So uh, Facebook is just an idea to uh, people that comes and goes and don't have that much time, but please uh, click the link above if you wanna stay with us for a while, or join the Hangout and uh, share with us, ask questions or, or make comments and, and, and we'll fire away with, with our best shot. <laughs> Yeah, so let's uh, jump right into it, Petey. I know that uh, you wanted to talk about uh, this idea of flow. I think this is really a, a, a fascinating subject, really, of really trying to find the, the right dynamic and the flow as far as uh, teaching and education. There are many variables, I'm sure, that one needs to consider. So wh why don't we jump right into it? Yes, uh, I want to I wanna start by saying how this idea uh, come to me. I always work with reflection with my students and with my uh, pre-service teachers. Uh, I tell them uh, we have three main things to do in, in our teaching job, which is uh, planning, executing, and evaluating, and uh, evaluating as a continuous, um, continuous part of planning of, uh, and also the, the execution. And, and, and this evaluation, I try to base it in reflection. I always talk about reflection. I always try to lead my students to start looking for better ways for reflecting myself. I always try to do it because I've always blow it too. So <laughs> I try to um, look for different techniques. I've been to very interesting talks in Mestizo and other conferences to see uh, what, what I can do uh, about it. And uh, this time I had... Um, I had a course on the uh, periodo intersemestral in between semesters be uh, before the starting of, of this semester. And people that, uh, that follows us or that have seen previous videos may have heard me uh, talk about uh, Cecilia Delgado, who is my uh, teacher in these courses. I tried to follow her. She's a psychologist. She's a very experienced psychologist. She, ha she has a, a radio program here in Aguascalientes in Radio Bay. Uh, every day at six in the afternoon and she talks about uh, life in general the things are related to life and personal growth and uh, this time we were talking about different aspects for uh, teachers themselves to uh, sort of uh, uh, prevention for burnout teachers right so this uh, one of the talks she mentioned, we were discussing about this theory of flow, which is mainly for, uh, I understand it focuses a little bit more on uh, enterprises and, and, and leadership and these kind of things. Uh, but I kind of found it interesting the way she put it for us. And, and that's where this idea came from. So um, 
since the beginning of the semester, I've been trying to integrate this idea to my talks about reflection, and this time it's not going to be the exception. So this is a theory that, um, uh, well, the main uh, character in here, it's uh, a Hungarian uh, guy named Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. Sorry about my pronunciation. Uh, I try to find the pronunciation, and that's the best way I can do it because it's spelled very weirdly with a lot of consonants in the middle. But the last name is uh, Csikszentmihalyi. Um, and he talks about this, this theory of flow. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen. Let me just run my um, PowerPoint presentation so you can see it. Uh, there you go. Um, and I share my screen. All right. Yeah, you, uh, there it is. Can you see my screen now, Ben? Y yes, I see it. Okay, now you're gonna see the PowerPoint presentation, which is uh, on a slide of a little bit of a kind of a river, right? Can you see that? Yes, so how we oh, see it. All right, yes. Well, I try to find out the best image for it. And um, uh, the idea in here is that we look for a flow channel. Flow channel, what for? The idea is to find a way to live uh, our lives uh, in a way that uh, we enjoy life, that we feel satisfied, that we feel uh, that we enjoy, that we feel plain, that we, uh, it, it goes through this idea, uh, the, the way that the teacher, um, the teacher in this course put it like, like that for us. Uh, the author goes through the idea of efficient people in, 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 in labor and working effectively and doing their best at their job at any time. And myself, I put it in the context of teachers. Uh, what's going on with teachers, with the students themselves? You can see it from both perspectives. Uh, how can you go through your teaching life or your student life, uh, whatever you are doing, with a perspective in which you feel challenged, but at the same time satisfied with the things you are doing. How do you feel in a, as the theory says, in a flow channel where where you um uh where you meet your expectations and continue growing and uh, and leave the stress a little bit aside. So the idea in here is that uh, we walk through a flow channel. Now, uh, I'm trying to represent the, the graph uh, this author uses, uh, but I also had the idea that maybe the flow channel uh, doesn't have to be linear, right? Or one, just one same channel. I, I, I believe that uh, you may have different branches or different um, ways to go uh, in, in your path as a teacher since... Uh, we are human beings and, and um, there are different aspects in our humanity which needs to grow and needs to flow, all right? But the idea, well, is to in every single of them to flow and have this channel, all right? So uh, uh, in here, the idea is that we have challenges and skills in our everyday life activities. Uh, our, our plane in here is going to be, our left plane is going to be representing the challenges and our plane in the horizontal plane it's going to uh, represent the skills with uh, uh, a degree of uh, low quantity and high quantity low quantity and high quantity of the skills all right here we go little by little so you start uh, an activity or you are performing an activity as a teacher you are working in your daily life you are having um your path in in this teaching world, in your classes, in your courses, the the kind of uh, levels you teach, uh, whatever age your students are, and you are in a certain situation, which is represented by this uh, the circle here in number one. And the idea in here is to follow and flow through the channel, right? But uh, what may happen also, according to this theory, is that when you have a time already uh, doing the same thing in the same way, uh, you tend to go through different paths, not exactly through the flow channel. You, you tend to go to two different uh, areas. One, 
which uh, it's going to be uh, represented by this circle number two. And we are going to call him uh, that it's a place in which you feel bored. Why? Because uh, you've been doing the same thing for a while. You've been working in the same fashion for a while. And your skills start to grow little by little. Why? Because you've been doing the same thing over and over and over again. This is practice. This is reinforcement. This is uh, uh, maybe there, there was a moment of transformation in which you learned new things. But uh, at this point, you have mastered whatever you are doing. And if you are not having any kind of change of difference, you may tend to go uh, in, in a position in which you start to feel boring. Uh, on the other side, it can also go through the idea of um, feeling anxiety. Anxiety, why? Because it may be that you've been in the same place uh, for a long time because uh, you haven't overcome certain issues or situations. And, uh, and you haven't really succeed in whatever you are expecting. So you may not be skipping that part of developing this skill. You may not be uh, going through that transformation or reinforcement moment. And then anxiety is caused in you. So I don't know if so far uh, I'm making myself clear, Ben. Uh, yeah, I know definitely. Um, yeah, it's very clear what you're saying here. And I like this, I like the, uh, the chart here that you're uh, talking about. Um, I've, a couple of things come up, but maybe I'll wait until you kind of go through what you're going to talk about, because maybe you're going to talk about what a couple of the questions that I am uh, right. thinking about. So if you want to go ahead and keep going, and uh, and I'll I'll kind of jump in when I all right when I have a question. So this is pretty much the picture of the scene. You are in a moment, so you can look at it from the teaching point of view, from the student point of view. Your students in the in your classroom may be in a place in which they already know you. They know how you carry on classes. They even uh, they even um, predict what you are going to say or what comes next in the class. And uh, it looks I don't know maybe I'm wrong, but it looks like kind of a book teaching a style, right? When you know how the unit starts and then what's the first activity and the grammar presentation. And yes, there may be something new, which is the the new topic or the issue, but the dynamic in the class get to be the same. So it's kind of static, right? And something I'm going to be talking about uh, tomorrow, and I'm going to cover this a little bit in a wider way, uh, is that when uh, when water is static, when the channel of flow is not really flowing, it's just static, uh, well, many things happen there, right? And um, and uh, water is not clean, and water is time to, it starts to get dirty, and uh, we, you have a lot of things going on there which uh, arm your status. So that's what may happen to your students, too, in talking about the students. As a teacher, I mentioned, well, you are in the same school, the same kind of groups, the same kind of uh, levels, and you may um, start to get some issues because you're static, because there is no change. There are no challenges. There's nothing new. Yes, there may be every year activities, the festivals and the things, but in time, that's going to be part of the routine. So that's going to lead you to one of these through paths. You're going to get out of the channel. You're going to get to, to be bored with what you're doing or to be anxious because you have never uh, come to master or overcome whatever you are doing. But the idea in here is that we go through the channel and we get to point number four. And point number four is the channel of flow. I try to represent it in a different way so you can see that it's not an static moment going from one to four. It's just, uh, yes, you may start at one, but, uh, and, and you don't really start at one. You have previous knowledge and you have previous things that, that you bring with you to the channel. But the idea is that you keep on flowing and getting there. Now, how do you do it? Uh, how do you manage to to... To achieve this flow channel, well, uh, I think the chart, it's kind of explaining itself. And that's why I have the two planes, challenges and skills. They have to meet in a balance. If you don't meet yourself into a balance, into activities which challenge you, but are achievable and things that you can uh, sooner or later master and, uh, and maybe sooner than later, that you can... Um, 
overcome, that you can find a solution that it's uh, according to your level of skills. Uh, that's when you can get into the flow channel. If you don't meet these kind of activities with the proper skills, that's when problems are going to be faced. That's when you're going to be anxious or bored. Now, mm, this balance, uh, I see it as a cyclic thing because uh, you may have a, a little bit of a challenge which helps you develop more your skills. And your skills at the same time are going to help you to overcome the challenges. And that's the way you go. And that's why we're talking about uh, a channel of flow, which is going pretty much in the middle, like meeting challenges and skills. And maybe for times, the challenge is going to be a little bit higher. But for sometimes, the skills is going to be uh, uh, in development until you get it and you go through it and you keep on flowing and flowing with these changes uh, in order to go and flow through number four. Now, yes, there are going to be moments in which uh, for some reason, for some times, you may lean into being bored. So, well, you have to get back on track, get back into the channel. And that's where you start to take a time to develop your skills. Maybe, uh, sorry, uh, we're talking about number two, which is the skills. Your skills overcome the challenge. It's when you take a time to reflect, to start looking at the ideas of um um, what do you need to transform in what you are doing so that your challenges are a little bit higher? And these challenges may come because of your institution, because, because of your boss, because of your students, because of your uh, the school itself, because of the system, or because you, because of yourself. You just decide to try out something new. Last week, we were talking about the use of technology, which sometimes is a big, big challenge for teachers. Well, Start with little steps. When you are in a moment in which you master certain things in the classroom, start to challenge yourself. Bring out new things. Try out new things so you can get back to this flow channel and leave boredom. On the other way, if you feel anxious, it's because the challenge is too high. So this is the time in which you take a time to refresh yourself, to uh, develop skills, to prepare yourself and take a time for um, preparation maybe talking to other colleagues, going to different uh, uh, congresses, talks, uh, reading books, reading articles, looking what others are doing, talking to each other may help you to start looking for ways to overcome the challenge. And that means that you are developing the skills and you get back on track. So it's kind of a simple chart at the end with four points in which we want to get from one to four and go on. Uh, in our flow channel, but it's a natural thing that four times we start to lean towards number two and number three in here. But the idea is to be attentive. And the point in here, and this is where I'm going to uh, stop a little bit for whatever, uh, if you have a question or, or comments, Ben, about this. The point in here, and this is the key of the talk I'm going to give, uh, I'm gonna give on, on, uh, on Tuesday, is reflection. Reflection as a key to understand where you are, what you want, where you have to be, where you would like to be, and start making decisions about uh, so you can keep on on your flow channel for your own sake, for your well, for your own well-being and satisfaction in your life. So Ben, how about that? <laughs> Yeah, uh, a couple of things come to mind, uh, Pity, and this is really interesting uh, that you you talk about this idea of flow, and I, I want to throw a couple of ideas and get your your take on it, your feedback. Yeah. Um, the first thing that I would say, and I, and I don't know if you came across this in your readings and uh, what you've been uh, looking at when you've researched this topic, but I I wonder also if we might include along with skills also understandings or knowledge right to to also consider both skills and knowledge uh together totally on that, on that totally. access uh, yeah. my, my my next point in here in fact let me see if i can go fast to my slides and that's where where, where you can see it uh let me let me this because i yeah because i do want to come back part. to that slide but uh, yeah go now, ahead i I, yeah. I just i just want you to see pretty much i mean uh, what i showed you is exactly the graph that this guy is using in his theory 
But the way um, uh, we saw it in the course, and I totally agree with the teacher on that, is that it applies to all the aspects of a human being. We are, um, we are uh, well, this is in Spanish, spiritual, right? Uh, but uh, we are uh, biological, psychological, social, and spiritual human beings. And in there, I totally agree with you. It's something that totally matches not only the skills, but the attitudes of the person also and the knowledge. It goes all the way. Same goes for challenges. Challenges are not going only be, going to be about doing something um, uh, because uh, it's something you can actually do with your hands or or, or do in in uh, in uh, with your knowledge, right? Your your capacity and knowledge. It would also apply the challenges in the different. Um, there's a theory about demands and support, a teaching theory about demands and support. And it talks about, I guess, seven different areas. Um, and these areas talk about psychomotor things. They talk about psychological demands. It talks about effective demands. So I think the challenges and all, and, 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 and the challenges in here would also be better represented by all this compendium of aspects. Maybe it's, not, it's nothing related to your mental capacity, but your effective capacities to cope with certain situations, I don't know, uh, maybe it's an interactional demand in which you are challenged by the kind of interaction you are required to have with your students. Maybe you are required to work hand by hand as equals in a certain project and maybe your experience or your um, personality or, or the, way the, 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 um, the way you've been teaching for long it's challenged you a lot in, the, in that capacity of lowering a little bit uh, certain aspects of yourself in order to work as an equal with the students. I don't know if, if that answers a little bit that part. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, one of the things I wanted to add here, I want to take kind of two different scenarios uh, and again, get your take on this. Mm -hmm. But I, I see that this idea of flow and this flow channel um, one thing that comes to mind is this idea of equilibrium. And what I mean by that is, uh, let's give one scenario where we have a teacher who is willing to take cha uh, challenges or take risks, try new things, and let's say that they're along maybe in this graph, kind of closer to the three uh, circle where uh, maybe the skills are a little bit lower than maybe the challenges because I think most of us, when we take challenges, just by the definition of the word challenge, uh, it is a challenge because mm -hmm. we're maybe working beyond our either skills or understandings of that particular situation, right? So I feel that if, if one is reflective, and you brought up this idea of being a, a reflective practitioner, that you're being reflective in your teaching and you're, you're having this awareness of uh, want your own development, that there's going to be a tendency to meet equilibrium in the sense that if you're working in let's say in the three area and you're working on these challenges and you're reflecting you're naturally going to move back into this channel this flow channel yeah maybe closer to the four than the one mm -hmm. but you're going to naturally gravitate towards that because if you're not a reflective practitioner and you're not really thinking about what you're doing you're just uh you know working beyond your skill and knowledge right. uh yeah you're gonna you're gonna ha suffer from anxiety and and e either uh maybe teacher burnout or whatever yeah. it's not gonna last long right so the idea is that if you're you know reflective and you're uh and for me personally i think not just being a reflective practitioner but but sharing being an open reflective practitioner that is you're actually sharing much like what we do on a weekly basis we're actually sharing our own reflection our own experiences with others with as many others as possible so that there's a feedback loop you're getting information from <laughs> others based on your own reflection i think if that happens then this idea of moving from a th back and forth between a three and a four back and three and a four you're you're going to move up this flow channel and I see it kind of a back and forth, again, moving from 
you know, periods of anxiety, which mm -hmm. I think is not necessarily a bad thing. Yep. If you're going back and forth and meeting this point of equilibrium where you're coming back into the flow channel, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And, and I would contrast that PD to a second scenario where let's say that a, a teacher is more along the lines of uh, the two area where maybe his or her skills are uh, advanced, but maybe the challenges, they don't take challenges, right? They're doing, and f the easiest example for me is uh, those who perhaps are using a book. They teach dr strictly from the book, right? right? Page to page to page, mm -hmm. and and it's all, it's all very uh, methodical, and uh, it's the same every day, drill and practice, that type of thing, where right. the teacher's not taking risks. But again, I think this idea of equilibrium also comes into play because I don't think we just stay in two. Just like I don't think t teachers typically for a long period of time will stay in three in the three mm -hmm. area. They're going to move back, and they're not necessarily going to move up the flow channel. They're going to move down the flow channel, <laughs> yeah. probably moving back to one. And again, it's going to be this back and forth where if we're not challenging ourselves, right, we're actually lessening our skills or and or our knowledge uh, and all those other categories that you just mentioned earlier they're all affected right i think it's all you know uh, affected in some way but i actually think that we can move down the flow channel just as e easily as we can move up depending on you know our the way that we reflect and the way that we accept challenges and risks in our own teaching practice yeah, I totally agree with that because uh, if you look from a wider point of view, uh, teaching is not a static. The, the new trends, life in general is not a static. Uh, generations change, technology changes, uh, lifestyle changes, the amount of people, everything changes around and it's in a constant, uh, in a constant uh, flow. Yes, we can talk about uh, all the theories which uh, talk about cyclic things, when things come back and all that kind of stuff. But there are things that uh, cannot be undone in life in general. And, and if we talk about teaching, uh, new trends, uh, new paths, technology, oh, uh, uh, from a point of view, cannot be undone. It's going to be there. Students' skills, natural skills are going to be wider developed. I want to see, for example, my kid, my, my 10 year old kid, I want to see her in the university, how she works with technology at that age, because right now she has a great skill on that. So what's going to happen to the teacher when she comes to the university about that? So that's why, yes, I, I, I agree with you. They, teachers cannot stay uh, static because somehow it's a downgrade if they stay static because the, the, the life flow is going to overcome them. So it's going to take them back. It's like having this whole picture uh, and leaving number one where it is and moving the whole pictures a little bit forward and leaving number one way behind because that's the way life is in general. And if you want to say it, that's the way teaching life, the reformas educativas, the textbooks, the... Uh, even the language itself, there's language change and there are things in language that constantly flow. So I totally agree with you in there. I think that I can al also hear some teachers say that there's going to be some external challenges too that that are going to maybe damper or uh, restrict um, the what we can do in the classroom. And, and I certainly acknowledge that. I mean, I know that there are going to be certain educational contexts where maybe resources are going to be lacking and uh, there's going to be all a myriad of uh, challenges that that we face beyond you know uh, you know maybe some of the challenges that we have more control over but i think that it's worth mentioning that you know this is why i go back to this idea of reflection not just an internal reflection but more importantly bringing up the, or opening up the reflective process so that as many other people uh, as possible can be part of the conversation. So, so if I am, and this is part of my talk too that I'm going to be uh, drilling 
home on when we when I talk about personal learning networks, right? And and each of us being responsible for our own personal learning network is if I'm open to showing reflection and actually sharing some of the challenges that I face, even some of the the failures that I've had in my class openly with others, I'm going to be in a position where I'm going to be able to learn more. And, and I can say, well, I don't have this type of resource, I don't have this, I don't have this in my teaching practice. But if you share and you start opening up your learning um, and your some of your challenges to others, you're invariably going to get more feedback and more ideas. And I think in that process, the whole teaching practice, I think um, most teachers are going to be more inspired to try new things, even with the limitations that, that they're going to have. Because I think the alternative of not sharing, I don't think is the answer. I mean, if you're not sharing and you're not getting that additional information, that, diff that feedback loop, then you're, you're just at a standstill, like you said. You know, you're just, you're stuck. There's, there's really no, you know, alternative. And I think, you know, too many teachers work in isolation. You know, I just think too many teachers are just stuck and whether they have control over it or not. And I think today with the technology that we have available in some ways, we have opportunities that we can extend the conversation, we can extend our own practice and our own reflection in a way that we benefit. I mean, this is, you know, we can look at this selfishly in the sense that, <laughs> yes, I'm benefiting when I come online and I share uh, my thoughts on a weekly basis in YouTube because I'm more likely to receive some sort of feedback uh, from others and whether they agree or disagree with what I'm saying, I'm still at a, a learning advantage because I'm putting myself in that position. Oh, yes, man. I, I, I think uh, you, you, you have a, a very good point in there because we always been talking about this sharing experiences and, and how we can grow from them and how, it, I mean, and more than talking, I, I can, I can tell the way it, it has transformed certain things in my daily teaching just by the fact of having a conversation in the hall and sharing this. I would um, st stop for a minute there because there are teachers who may not be at that point. I want to share with you an image that I'm going to use in my presentation. I'm just uh, opening a little bit while because um, uh, it helped me to have a reflection on what I'm going to say next. Uh, well, the, it's just it's the main image. There are some teachers which are not really in the point of sharing because I, I can tell by experience in some, in some, of, in some of my classes with pre-service teacher, especially when they face teaching for the first time, when it comes to reflection and when it comes to feedback, uh, they kind of denote they are not even ready to um, not to forget about sharing, to go and explore in a reflective way the things they are doing by themselves, not even sharing with others, accepting what's going on. A lot of people, a lot of teachers in every single group I had in, in teaching worship, teaching for the first time, at least I have two or three students which are really defensive about whatever they do. Uh, and sometimes maybe uh, I, I try to change my uh, feedback style just to avoid this kind of uh, situations in which they do not accept and are defensive about everything they do. Uh, and, and yes, sometimes it's because you don't have the proper words according to the person. But most of the times I can sense is because people Pull in well, these kind of teachers sometimes are afraid of really uh, putting themselves not not to expose themselves in front of others by sharing, but to uh, tell to themselves about what's going on in my classroom. What am I doing? And sometimes I think that's why I chose this picture. Uh, I don't know if it more sort of makes the point because uh, you go. You want to find the truth about what you are doing, and then you realize 
there are a lot of things or maybe 99.9% of the things are a consequence of what you are doing over there. Of, uh, for example, one of the things I struggle a lot is the planning. They do not accept. They are not actually planning. They are just having just some ideas and and um, kind of uh, thinking about what they're going to do and preparing some material. And they do not realize about that until sometimes I have to even force them by some rules and standards or specific things for specific people. So I can sort of, uh, to put it in a word, guarantee, which is not the right word, but I think it, it, it puts out what I want to say, uh, to guarantee that they're actually taking the time for planning, designing material and doing the things. And then they come, they do it, and they realize, yes, there's something different. They feel different. There's something better when they invest some time in planning. But my point in here is not about the planning. It's about uh, it's difficult for them to accept they are not actually taking the time to do it as an example of this, right? So there's people that it may not be really about, uh, they may not be at the point of the sharing they may be at the point of understanding the way reflection works and the importance of being honest with yourself. And this is, I'm not going to go over that because this is uh, what I'm going to be talking on Tuesday. I'm going to be exploring a little bit uh, some general characteristics. There are many uh, approaches for reflection, but I'm going to talk about a simple one, a three steps <laughs> reflection. So you can actually um, go through these ideas and start putting on the table honestly for yourself a reflection which helps you to overcome this uh, lack of flow, this static situation or degrading, uh, downgrading situation in which you don't um, uh, you don't uh, you don't move forward just because of the fact that you have never stopped to actually reflect in an honest way yeah i'm reminded of a quote from hillary clinton when she was on the campaign trail uh, i think this last campaign in fact and she was getting attacked like all politicians do right personally about you know whatever but she was mm -hmm. getting attacked from all sides and i remember her saying that um she takes everything all those comments uh seriously but she takes nothing personally Right. And since I heard that, I immediately thought this applies to teachers. Mm -hmm. Like when you get feedback about your own teaching, whether it's in a teaching program, whether it's a tutor or whether it's your students and you're, in, you're an in-service teacher and you get feedback, we should all take it very seriously, but we don't take it personally. And that's one of the hardest things to do. I mean, I will admit mm -hmm. that it is hard to not take teaching personally because it's it's very individualistic i mean it's very much our own you know preferences or we have our own knowledge base and our tendencies and personality and all the other factors that come into our own teaching practice it's very difficult to remove ourselves and say look this is not about me this is still about the students right i'm of course i'm the teacher but it's not about me. It's about what they're doing, their learning experience, and what I can do as a teacher to provide that. So one of the things that I'm, I'm doing this semester, uh, kind of along these same lines, is that uh, in my writing class, in my puppet class, this is a, for, a writing class for learners. They're uh, pre-service English language teachers at about an A2 level, English proficiency level. But I'm having my students write a weekly journal. Every week they write a paragraph about what they liked for the week, what they disliked, what came easy for them, what was challenging for them, even suggestions, what strategies they were using, what could they do differently in the future, all these different reflective types of questions. I give them options, and I gave them a long list of questions that they could answer. And But I'm opening up myself, obviously, right, because, you know, they could very easily say, well, I didn't like, and they do. They Sometimes they, some students will say, I didn't like this, this, uh, you know, this was hard, or whatever the type of feedback. But I'm first of all trying to give my students the voice of offering that feedback so that they know that I'm listening 
and I'm trying to make adjustments. Now, you might say, well, you're just opening up yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, you're, you, know, you could very easily get a lot of negative comments and, and, and so on. But I think this is where we need to be as teachers. We need to be in a place where we are open for that type of feedback on an ongoing basis, whether it's directly from our own students or from our tutor or from our director or coordinator or whomever, but that we are willing to accept. Now, and I know that that's easy to say, hard to do sometimes, yeah. but I think it's just a matter of attitude for one, um, and two, just a willingness to have to an acceptance of saying, okay, I, I'm not going to take this personally. I'm going to learn from whatever mistakes that I make because we all make mistakes and we all do things where our students are like, you know, they don't like what we're doing and what they're doing. But we learn from those. And I, I think, again, the alternative is, is it can't be the answer because if we remain this, you know, kind of closed off type of uh, practitioner where we're not willing to accept others uh, others opinions then we're not going to be in a good place uh, to be lifelong right. learners as we get into the uh, field right and, and you're talking maybe specifically about teacher trainers right and I, I, I know that there's going to be a transition you know hopefully from this idea of not really being used to receiving feedback but then over time being more willing to do that but but if, if, if teachers are leaving a, a program, a teaching program, and they're not willing to, to be open, then we're sending teachers in the field that aren't really going to be prepared to better themselves. You know, that, and that's my feeling, is that if, we're, if they're not getting it from a teacher program or if they're just not getting it on their own, then they're going to remain, more than likely, they're going to remain uh, closed off and not willing to to accept that and and you know we all know some teachers that are that are like that they're they're not open to outside opinions and they're very closed off and so you know that's really the the issue here is trying to not take it so personally and 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 I feel that for me personally it's actually liberating even though it's sometimes it's scary you know because of course yeah. none of us wants to hear negative mm -hmm. comments right mm -hmm. that's normal and 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 that's that's part of the the process but but it's i look at it as a challenge i look at it like okay this week didn't go that well what can i do next week and i that I turn that into a, a challenge as you mentioned with your graph okay i'm going to move myself up to the challenge area maybe beyond my skill with the hopes of you know increasing my knowledge and skills as 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 we go along, right? As I go along, so um, yeah, I just want to throw that out there. This idea of not taking teaching so personally, uh, and just kind of opening up the the experience a little bit more with others. Yeah, I I, I and I agree with you. And it's, it's um what I'm gonna do in the talk is I'm gonna make an analogy uh, about uh, a river in water. I'll Oh, I'll focus a little bit on the preparation before sending the message. Right today, I just went right through the flow theory. But uh, I, the idea in here is that uh, you have to nurture yourself. You have to to refresh yourself. You have, I mean, we are teachers, and whatever class you are teaching, whatever you are doing, you are working with human beings, and you are putting some of yourself in others. Uh, seeds that were planted in you before, you're going to pass them on. And they're going to take some of you. And, uh, and, and uh, whatever you do in the classroom is going to affect lives, literally. Literally is going to affect a life, at least for that day, at least for that class. Uh, sometimes is for life. Sometimes it's something serious and it's for life. So, uh, how how can you give uh, if you don't nurture yourself? You have to constantly keep on refreshing. And the way to do that is to give away. That's why I'm going to make the analogy. I mean, I have a lot of slides. I would like to share them all with you now. Um, I'm going to share one more if you allow me, uh, because it's one of the keys also, and it makes exactly the point you are just talking about. What if I don't share? What if I don't go through this? Um, let me, I'm going to put my screen 
and I'm going to run my slide. Uh, all right, can you see that? Yes, I see it. Uh, do you know what that is? <laughs> it says down there in the in the link. <laughs> oh, the Dead Sea. That's the Dead Sea exactly. That's water that is static, that it's there, that is not flowing, is not going through the flow channel, is not giving anything away. It just gets there to evaporate. And there's no life in the Dead Sea, and that's why it's called the Dead Sea. Because it's the lowest point on Earth, below sea level, and it doesn't flow. The water does not go out. It just evaporates. And that's pretty much the analogy I want to make that day. Um, because that's the way it can happen to us if we are not open to share whatever we got in ourselves, to put it out there, to see what's going on. We're not going to get nurtured. We're not going to get refreshed. We're not going to get new water. We're going to be static and nothing is going to grow in there. And um, I think um, uh, the most interesting thing for me when I found out about the Dead Sea a while ago, when I was a, a teenager, I, I knew about the Dead Sea. I, I had a talk about this specifically on another context. But the interesting thing is that it's the end of the Jordan River. And uh, and the river is full of life. <laughs> it's a totally different situation. But as the flow of the river continues right over here, um, the flow of the river starts to get salty and a little bit more salty and a little bit more salty because it approaches the lowest point on earth with, when, where water does not go out, where water just stay there to evaporate. So, and you know, in this process of evaporation, salt is the one that is left out there and it's not good for life all around. And, and this is pretty much part of the message I, I want to launch there. And it's exactly what you said technically about teaching. We have to risk it and we have to start by uh, reflecting honestly about ourselves, reflecting and thinking about what we are doing, how we are doing it, how we want it to be, how we would like ideally to be, how we would like it to be. And um, in order to have a path of flow and start working towards it. And now with the dynamic you, you saw in, in, the, in, in the other graph, which is exactly the following in there, well, uh, start working on your skills and on your challenges, but not being static because that's what is going to arm your profession in that sense. I think that's uh, pretty much the method, the message I'm going to send to Tuesday. So if you are around and uh, we're going to have our conference on Monday and Tuesday at the Universidad Autónoma de Aguas Calientes. So if you're here locally, uh, feel free to check it out. Check out Pity's talk. Unfortunately, I think I have a talk the same time, Pete, as you have yours, yeah. so I won't be able to attend yours. But I'm sure we'll be talking and expanding on many of the comments that we talk about during our presentations next next week and our uh, subsequent broadcast here in Teacher Learning Cast. So uh, do stay tuned and uh, also be part of the conversation. Feel free to leave comments on our Facebook page. Let, let us know what your what your thoughts are, what your perspectives are. If you disagree with what we have to say, feel free to voice your opinion. If there are topics that you want us to address in the future, also let us know there. If you ever want to be part of the conversation and actually want to add or come into our uh, Hangouts, uh, we're always looking for people to uh, either interview or just uh, have a casual conversation with uh, regarding anything educational. So, you know, do reach out to us if you want to be part of the conversation and we'd be happy to um, to have you on. Also, if you are interested in finding some of our past recordings, there are many links in the Facebook page, and we have a dedicated page for Teacher Learning Cast, and you can find a lot of the uh, videos that uh, we have made. All of our Saturday recordings are uh, made available so that you can access those at your leisure. Yeah, if you need some more information about any of the topics you find, um just let us know. Send us send us a message, an email, whatever, and we can share with you whatever we got about it. Because sometimes we just go over certain things, or we just mention things that uh, for sure we will have somewhere uh, there 
in storage or are things we prepare, for example, for this uh, talk that I'm giving on Tuesday, there are a lot of things I want to mention and a lot of aspects I've been working with for long. So I have plenty of material around. If you need any more, any extra information, uh, we can give you sources and we can share with you all of this. Um, uh, and not just about this one, about all of the talks in all of the videos. So keep in touch, please. Also, a lot of uh, schools have different events also, educational events. And so if you ever want to broadcast those or share those, so that this is another good place to do that. You can either, if you mention it in Facebook, uh, we can also mention it in the live broadcast where we frequently read over the comments there in our Facebook page. So uh, let us know what the dates are, what the event is. Uh, feel free to upload, of course, any information related to the, to the event itself. Uh, and we would be happy to promote that uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, just let us know, and uh, we'll constantly be looking at uh, Facebook to uh, receive those types of comments. Right. I want to thank Ben because I know we are getting to the end of the transmission today. We spend an hour on this idea. I want to thank the people that joined in Facebook today. We have uh, Beto, Bert, Rodriguez that join us, Noemi Mora, Adrián Carrillo, Chucho Arellano, uh, Richard, which always connects to the live transmission. Thank you for connecting. Uh, Luis Badillo, Jacqueline Martinez, Nelly. Greetings, Nelly. Nice to hear from you. I got you on Facebook recently. Good that you join us. Monica Romero, Carmen Llamas, Pili Moreno. Uh, Carla, uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Chio Rangel, always all, uh, connecting for a while on Saturday's morning. And uh, Mr. Raul Ramirez, welcome to the transmission. We are about to end teacher learning cast. Remember, share the, the share the video, share the transmission, invite people, tell other teachers about this. And not only teachers, people that speak English can also come and practice a little bit their language by listening to us. Maybe, maybe I'm not the best model in the language, but at least I, I give you a prior level so you can prepare your ear. So when you skip into Benjamin's speaking, you, you are ready to skip to the next level and so on and so on okay yes well thank you very much pd thanks everyone for watching also those who are tuning in on youtube um and i think we'll go ahead and conclude this week's broadcast uh, thanks everybody for watching and uh, we will see everyone next week thank you very much keep on learning